So Massimo, imagine tomorrow uh, the Indian government were to appoint you their ambassador for design for the country. Mm -hmm. How would you approach that assignment? What would you do? Well, number one, of course, the only way I can uh, answer that, of course, would be by teaching, by using education. Uh, education to design, obviously, not the entire system of education. Um, so I think that the role in that case would be the one of preparing designers for, for the moment that the India would become a global uh, culture. And at the same time, of course, I will insist tremendously <laughs> on, the, on the importance of responsibility, design responsibility and responsibility of the designer toward the society. You know, uh, in what way? What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I, as I was just uh, saying before, you know, uh, there are moments where designer is involved just with design, and there are moments where his role it might, if he's a responsible person, uh, might involve a different kind of responsibilities, more social. Uh, as I said, during the war in Italy, for instance, when I was growing up. A lot of architects, they were not doing architecture, they were doing the resistance, you know, so substituting the pencil with a gun, you know. <laughs> but it was a moment of doing that. I don't mean that in India they should press the, <laughs> press the gun, but uh, what they should do is, what I will do in that case, I will certainly be sure that it's not education to design doesn't revolve around pretty things, but revolves around structure, both of design and society. So how would you approach the signage, given the very sensory overload visual language of the Indian marketplace? Do you think a, a logo like the Citibank logo would work in that type of vernacular? Yeah, I think it works. I think it's just that it might be the first one, and, and it's going to be followed by others, and, and, and it will live together with the others in, with Indian characters, which are beautiful, by the way. You know. Well, just imagine Piccadilly Circus in London. Would it be destroyed by an Indian sign? It would just fit there, like all the rest of it. So it's, it's, now you can see how a city corp, from our point of view, or a city bank, will work, it works fine over would there. You, would you break uh, your rules with the um, different typefaces that you use? Would you open it up to further typefaces or would you hold firm well, the with point Bodoni? Is, uh, and uh, well, there is no Bodoni really in India. <laughs> all, all the Bodoni design, uh, you know, Indian typefaces uh, 200 years ago. Uh, I, I think that the rule of design not the rules of design style, you know, but the rule of design are above and beyond everything. They are above and beyond geography, they are above and beyond fashions, above and beyond trends. Good design is ubiquitous and forever. Bad design is localized and, uh, and, and uh, temporary, I mean uh, ephemeral, bad design, you see. So once you know that, you know right, right away in which field you should put your work. So you put on the so-called good designs toward issues that are beyond time, issues which involve responsibility toward the society, so you design this way. Now, what is the point of designing beautiful signs for the, for the uh, Indian railways? If you ever travel in India, you know, you can see the railways, the trains are, full of people, more people outside than there is inside. You know, there are signs that says, don't cross the uh, tracks. And while the train is coming into the station, people are still crossing the track. So you can see, <laughs> is, there, are, uh, there is a lot to do before, you know, uh, this, but the, before a good sign come, come around. But this doesn't mean that you have to wait for doing good sign. You can do it. But you can expect that that changes the environment. You have to change habits in people's mind so that, like in the new cities that I was saying, the, the, the new glass Indian cities, you know, like China and so on, where the people are different. So there, 
they belong, they're global. They belong to the rest of the world, they belong to the culture of our time. You know, there used to be, uh, up to 20 years ago, BC, you know, before, before, before computer, the issue of architectural context and design context was extremely important, you know. Um, I remember at that time, even in places like India, I would say we have to look for, a, for an Indian way of doing modern architecture. And there are architects like Charles Correa, for instance, that have done that, you know, successfully to a certain extent. They have done architecture which is modern, but at the same time, it, it deals with uh, some of the folklore of, uh, or, or traditions of, of uh, local culture, you know, local architecture. Uh, today, after the computer, AC, uh, we live in a, such a global, culture where the Indians, they use the same computer that you use and I use and everybody uses from China to Tumbuktu. You know, they, we're all using the same tools. We all have, have access to the same information. We can all Google everything, you know, we can all see the same thing. Therefore, there's no more reason for a local thing, local expressions. There are there, they will survive for a certain amount of time, maybe 50 years, you know, whatever it is. But the new generation, yesterday in the front, front page of the New York Times, there was a picture of five years old kids working on a, on a touch screen, you know, that big. I mean, this is the future. It's incredible. Five years old, they can do these things. Well, know, especially already. since a lot of technological advancements are happening in yeah. India. But you said that you, you feel that um, there'll be a global visual language. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that that will dilute the impact of local spirit? No, no, this is what is great about it, as a matter of fact. This is where uh, local culture and traditions, thousands of years old, will always find their way creeping in, in, let's say, in the global culture, that they will transform it in a sense, you know. There will be a Indian way, as there might be a Chinese way, you know, right now, you know, for instance. But when, you know, I remember that I was looking at the work of Chin Chinese uh, designers and architects 20 years ago, it didn't exist almost, it was nothing. Today is among the best. They talk like us, even better. But they still have a little Chinese, you know, influence here and there. Japanese, the same. You know, there's a Japanese way of doing architecture and design, you know, that is different from European one, but, or American one. But, and there is an American way to a certain extent, you know. The, you know, there are uh, cultures that find their way, you know. And uh, India will find their way. This is why I think that it's wrong to say that modernism doesn't belong to India. That is really a nonsense. That doesn't make really any sense because modernism is not a style. Only people that never understood what modernism is all about can say that. They think modernism is a certain style. Modernism is not a style. Modernism, modern, <laughs> modernism, it is an attitude, it is a, it's a way of approaching reality in a way that is positive, constructive, and long-lasting and responsible. That is what modernism is about, it's not a style. But a lot of people, they think it's a style. And there's are the people that say all these stupid things around, you know. So I hope that this conference will address itself, not to, pro not to prolong the misunderstanding, not to cry about Indian style or Indian uh, expression in their voice. This is a great moment for getting rid of the past and really the great opportunity for uh, looking forward to the next period, the next global era, which is brought about by new technology. The Gutenberg invention, invention in 1400 changes the world. Now the computer is changing the world again. We're going from local culture into a global culture because the information is simultaneous everywhere. It's not 
you know, it doesn't take a long time anymore, like in India. There will be things uh, that will resist. The beautiful ladies with their sahari, you know, sari, they, they will probably last for a long time, thank God, they look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, I've seen uh, ladies in sari, you know, working on a computer. And, uh, and it's fine, it just adds elegance, <laughs> if nothing else. Any advice for this um, new world that we're going into in these emerging markets that are becoming far more sophisticated, far more capitalist, mm -hmm. um, and far more design savvy? Any advice for these markets? You cannot change society. Society is running on four wheels, I say all the time. One wheel is the economy, Another one is the industry, another one is the distribution, and the other one is design. You know, design is all around us. Even this beautiful computer, without this beautiful design, perhaps uh, wouldn't be as, as successful as it is, you know. I think Jonathan Ive, is the designer of the Apple things, deserves the same kind of a recognition that Steve Jobs has. Steve Jobs is the man with vision, which is very important. Vision, courage, and determination. These are the three components that bring society forward. On behalf of Massimo Vignelli and myself, we wish you a wonderful time at Design Yatra, and thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your conference.